A wheelchair-bound Housing New Zealand tenant has had to cover the cost of building an emergency access path outside the Nelson property she lives in. Donna, Donna Sutherland, a double amputee, is hoping she can sell her car to raise a couple of thousand dollars to pay back a family member for the work. Housing New Zealand says it has modified some of her property to suit her needs, but the pathway wasn't considered essential. Here's Tracy Neal. So, this is the path that got put in. My brother dug out. You can imagine how much work they did digging it out. All the way to the top. Donna Sutherland was hit by a bus while riding her motorbike in Nelson several years ago and suffered severe injuries to her legs. I had soft tissue damage, so my legs were quite black. From the impact of the bus, the injuries that I got, I was very lucky to be alive. I mean, my head hit the ground and I thought, oh, that's pretty cushioned, am I still here? And I was trying to see where the bike was and it was tied underneath, underneath the bull bars of the bus. Donna's legs were eventually amputated. She agreed to move to the current property from another Housing New Zealand home on the basis it could be adapted to her needs. That included wheelchair access from the back of the house around to the front. The house had existing ramp access to the front and rear door, but the only way out in an emergency was through a side door which has steps down to a path. They told me to jump out of the chair and, and crawl. Basically that's what they said to me. You just have to jump out of the chair and crawl. I said, how am I meant to get out the back door, mate? And he said, I said, there's steps in concrete. I can't get the chair down there. It's all steps. Housing New Zealand says in a written statement that an application lodged with a special Ministry of Health fund to build the pathway was declined, but it's worked closely to support Ms Sutherland in her new home. We have spent more than $2,000 modifying this property to suit the needs of the tenant after the usual funding provider declined further funding. This work has included widening essential exterior paths, widening entry to a shed, installing a gate and creating a wheelchair cleaning area. Donna says some of the modifications were as a result of an earlier fire in the house. So they modified it for me, but the things that were meant to be done that were very important never did. I could never get even around the garden, I couldn't even, can't even get around to shut, shut the side gate. It's like still these things. I've only just this year got them to put those side rails on the end of the concrete so my wheels wouldn't go over. Housing New Zealand, which says it's allocated $1.7 million from the Equipment and Modification Service Fund to 433 people in its homes in the last year, says the path wasn't essential and the tenant chose to install it herself. Donna says her brother, Paul Sutherland, dug the path and then hired a builder to help. So we asked Housing Corp to sort of come to the ball with it all and they didn't so I paid for it and uh, had it all done, you know, I sort of did the job and gave her a path and another ramp which she's got two exits to get off the property if there's a fire and gave her independence a bit more too, you know. Paul says the builder noted the potential consequences of the lack of access. If there was a fire and you're out the back there, she'd be cooked. Um, she wouldn't get off the property mate, and she wouldn't, you know, you drag yourself on your stumps, it's a joke. Paul says he's tried to do all he can for his sister, including tending her lawns and garden, but he's since pulled back because of the friction over the bill for the job. Donna says that's the greatest loss to her, but she's now planning to sell a modified vehicle she's no longer able to use to pay him back. For Checkpoint, Tracy Neal.